they aren't impeaching Trump again as punishment because they're currently impeaching him for a second time. They're doing it to send a message to anyone else outside the club who might get the idea that they can run for president ever again. Every front being attacked uh, by Hollywood members, by powerful journalists, um, I would say, you know, elitists in the media, people in Congress, and yes, even some of our intelligence community. But I will let you know this, that as we seek to bring you the truth here at Blaze TV and at Slightly Offensive, I'm not wavering. I'm not going to give up, and we're going to continue to produce this show no matter how hard they try to take us down. Offices since then, and as they were escorted to several different secure locations, Gra and Presley and her husband tried to remain calm and vigilant, not only of rioters, but of officers they didn't know or trust, she said. So she is bringing out the point, and AOC said this on her live stream too, that they were nervous and they had a brush with death, like meaning they, because 84% of law enforcement voted for Trump, that there is a distrust inside of Congress, she's saying, of the law enforcement inside the building, right. thinking that they might have been involved in an inside job. And she's alluding here that not only was her panic button ripped out, which shows you this is showing there's somebody on the inside working either to put her in a compromised position, which is true, or maybe law enforcement was involved in removing this. Black police officers describe the racist attacks they face as they protected the Capitol. Like they've turned this, listen to this, this is such baloney. It's like, the first glimpse of the deadly tragedy that was about to unfold came at 9 a.m. in the morning of the insurrection for one black veteran of the U.S. Capitol Police, but it didn't come from his superiors. Instead, the officer had to rely on a screenshot from Instagram sent to him by a friend. He's quoted saying, I found out when they were planning what they were planning when a friend of mine screenshot me an Instagram story from the Proud Boys saying, we're breaching the Capitol today, guys. I hope y'all are ready. The officer who asked to remain anonymous out of fear of retaliation from his superiors. Now, this is interesting because he's saying that he knew that he was going to get breached before it happened. Mm -hmm. So they did have knowledge this was going to happen. Yep. This officer is admitting this. And there's nothing in this tweet that says that the Proud Boys were uh, trying to kill black officers. And we know the number one officer who died, office, officers, is it Sicknick? Or Shinnick, I'm sorry if I'm messing that one up, but the officer who tr tragically died in an altercation with these people and collapsed in his office and died from injuries later, he was a white officer. So, you know, if they were trying, if this entire Capitol Hill siege was to kill black people, I'll be damned because black people weren't killed in it. So the AM, they say a group of Proud Boys is staging on the east side of the Capitol, along with hundreds of Trump supporters. Um, they have them here in orange beanies. Then if you go down here a little bit more, they said at 11.52 AM, this is all Eastern, Donald Trump Jr. films the president and his inner circle backstage before his father's speech, marveling at the size of the crowd. Now at 12.17 p.m., about 15 minutes into his speech, Trump calls on his supporters to walk to the Capitol while his speech would go on for another hour. We left well before that. That's why we were actually at the front when all of this was going down, because we actually left Trump's speech. I want to say he was talking for maybe 10 to 15 minutes by the time we 10 left. 10 minutes. Yeah, he was only talking for a very short amount of time, so we didn't really even listen to any of his speech. We started marching immediately. Right, and this is important to remember, because when he called people to leave, we are going to find out later that they couldn't have arrived at normal walking speed until six minutes after the violence started. So this idea that his call to put, send people to the Capitol was a call for violence is hard to understand in terms of the timeline. Mm -hmm. Then that's when the violence erupted, yeah. which is an interesting thing. Now, I'm not going to get into here. To, to, I'm going to let the, the listener decide. Definitely at the, at the end of his speech couldn't have caused the violence because this was way before that. Mm -hmm of what Trump actually said, though, too, because that's important. He said, let's go peacefully march to the Capitol. Remember, you cannot forget that point when Trump called for people to peacefully march. So at no point did he say, we're going to go to the Capitol. We're going to make our voices heard. We're going to scare Congress into making the right choice. He said, we are going to peacefully exercise our rights and walk to the Capitol. Right. So even in the transcript of his speech, he's calling for peace. Right. What's the floor plan? There's a door to the right. That's a cop. Going downstairs, back to the around, door to the east. Got you, we're gonna get over. The door's already open. We just need a plan. We need enough people. We need to push forward. Okay. Hey guys, I've been in the other room. Listen to me. In the other room on the other side of this door, right here where these feet are standing, there is a glass.
that if somebody, if it's broken, you can drop down into a room underneath it. There's also two this. doors Break in this. the other room. Break one Break at the here. rear Break and one here. to the Break right when you go in. So people should probably coordinate together if you're going to take this building. Watching this video, Elijah, again, like we talked about earlier in the show, there was multiple angles to this event. There was a peaceful side, but there was also this side, which we are clearly documenting. And I mean, like you just, you know, we were, we were speaking about why does the media feel like we need to gaslight people on what happened when the evidence is clearly there and we're seeing it in the videos that we took. Yeah, I know. And that's my, my point is that I feel like as we're talking about this, maybe people can tell I'm like, I mean, I'm doing as well as I can do when you have all the institutions and people that are supposed to be defending you and supporting you. I mean, even journalists. So, you know, a lot of these people <laughs> are trying to rewrite this, this history. Uh, and we have a, a, you know, we realize that this is, this is real implications. One of the men who was arrested, this comes from Newsweek, a Georgia man arrested in the pro-Trump Capitol riots actually dies by suicide. It says here that Christopher Stanton, Georgia, a man from the state of Georgia who had recently been arrested for participating in last Wednesday's insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, died on Saturday by suicide after a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest. He had been charged with entering certain property that is the United States Capitol grounds against the will of the United States Capitol Police and past the set Washington, D.C. curfew, 6 p.m. local time. Uh, he was arrested with three other men in the group. What I'm trying to say here is that, look, he's being charged with something that has uh, some penalties. I think it's just a misdemeanor from my mm -hmm. understanding. But the public pressure of saying that everyone who broke in is a terrorist before we've gone to trial, before we've understood really what people's intentions were, is why I always get afraid of these pe things. Like, I, I didn't, I knew what terrorism was. And I would say that some people at that event committed acts of terrorism. But not all people did. Not all people who entered the Capitol building are terrorists. I think some people went in to commit acts of terrorism, according to our own standards. Um, and I think that's why there's importance to have trials. It's very important to have the legal and judiciary system investigate people and, you know, really uh, hold people accountable and try to understand why they were there. You know, know were they there to document? Were they there, like, again, as as a, a observer? Did they just walk in? A description of yet of rioters who seized the Capitol last week, writing in a new court filing that the intention was to capture and assassinate elected officials. Um, CNN's just releasing that today, letting people know that people wanted to assassinate elected officials. Guess who told you guys that the night of the actual siege in an emergency broadcast, I let you know that news. CNN is like 10 days later than us at Slightly Offensive, meaning your direct support of the show, leaving us reviews, manually sharing, supporting us at blazetv.com, supporting Angle. They are harassing my wife, my family, uh, trying to destroy the show, this network, whatever they can to completely undermine the reality uh, that, you know, I guess the fact that Blaze TV is a better reporting agency uh, on the budget of about, a, you know, way less budget than these billion dollar companies. You know, I've, I've, it's been difficult for me to get up every day and I'm not going to lie. I haven't been sleeping through the night. Um, I'm feeling very sick. Uh, my, my, my head hurts and it's been, uh, you know, something that you might even notice is that we're not in, we're not in our main studio. Um, we are in an undisclosed location. Luckily we still have 
My producer, Savannah, is sticking with us. She's here. She's looking as lovely as ever. Savannah, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Lige. This has definitely been a very difficult week for both of us. And one of my favorite things about this show is that we keep it so raw and real with our audience. And I'm glad that you're coming forward and, you know, really explaining how reporting has affected you in 2021. It's very sad to see the state of our country and that we can't even report on an event without the severe backlash that you know you've been facing we've been facing as a network i'm not complaining about it because i i voluntarily did this but from somebody who's genuinely uh dealing with some of the worst attacks in cancel culture that is really stretching the limits of our ability to produce the show uh, and continue we aren't stopping but i need you guys to to subscribe to the audio only podcast it's it's free it doesn't cost you anything and it's just a way to jump on um, but I want to talk to you about this right now. So we are going to be breaking in um, some amazing stories and showing you how CNN has colluded with BLM activists and with people who were encouraging writers. I do want to say this. Uh, there is a man named John Sullivan. And if you can go to my screen right here, let's talk about this. Uh, there's a breaking story. Number one trending in the world. John Sol Sullivan was charged in federal court after being arrested by the FBI he was heard allegedly egging on protesters in a video he provided, according to federal criminal complaint. He remains in custody in Utah on U.S. Marshals hold request. So I want to talk to you a little bit about this. So John Sullivan was a reporter. He was a non-credentialed reporter who uh, appeared on Anderson Cooper on CNN as a credible source. This is him pictured right here. So I don't know if you guys know this, but the entire world is trying to make up lies that somehow... Um, you know, I'm in collusion with people who committed crimes at the Capitol Hill. It's a flat out lie. It's, it's intentionally dishonest. It's something that I think that the people who have intentionally defamed me and slandered this show knew what they were doing. I have a lot of enemies. Uh, but it's funny because, you know, CNN actually uses this informant. We can bring him back up. This is Anderson Cooper. Um, this is, I think, is Anderson Cooper homosexual? It doesn't matter. But I think he's I think I think uh, he's one of the homosexual uh, anchors and he is, you know, a real, um, you know, kind of snooty guy. And and he's, you know, the, the CNN, I'm real proper. Everyone's not like me. I'm an, a coastal elitist. And he's really got that. I'm from L.A. and I know these kind of people. And, you know, I just want to say that as we expose John Sullivan and we get into the reality of who he is, uh, John Sullivan is a convicted uh, terrorist and CNN supports him. CNN supports terrorists. And I will not withhold that statement. And this is very serious. It could because, again, we have the left wing accusing the right wing of doing what they're doing. And this is the playbook. This is what they do. Savannah, this is what they do. You know, every time they accuse us of something, we find out they're doing it, too. Exactly. It happens every single time. I mean, time and time again, take any topic you want to in the political realm. And that always seems to be the case. And it's very frustrating, too, because. You know, I, I feel like the reason why this week has been so difficult is because while CNN is actually doing what they are saying we are doing, they're also simultaneously trying to destroy us for the lies that they're actually a part of. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that. John Sullivan, unfortunately, was caught on camera with Jade Sacker, who I have her website here. Let's bring this up. Jade Sacker is a documentary photographer currently based in Los Angeles, California, having graduated from the International Center of Photography last spring. We're going to go to this video here that was released by Amuse. Uh, I think this was actually leaked by the federal investigators. Uh, CNN's Jade Sacker, who apparently people are saying she worked for CNN, I don't know, um, is penetrating the Capitol with a member of BLM. I don't think he's actually Antifa, guys. He seemed to be more BLM. Uh, but he was there to document, but he also looked like he was there to catch crimes. Listen to as they accuse us of conspir conspiring with the protesters. I never conspired with anybody. Listen to them on film talking about how they worked with protesters to get in and they're excited about it. I mean, this is insane. We did it. <laughs> you were right. We did it. Dude, I was trying to tell you. I, I couldn't say much. You were right. <laughs> you just have to watch my chat. Is this not going to be the best film you've ever made in your life? No. That's it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah? Hell yeah. Wait, you were recording, right? I'll delete the <laughs> But I didn't record you. It was just worse. So here's some of the things that stood out to me. So right now, um, if you can go to my screen here, we have the official 
prosecution documents, the United States of the District for the uh, Court of the District of Columbia, United States of America versus John Earl Sullivan. Violations include civil disorders, restricted ac accessing restricted buildings or grounds here on the right, and violent entry or disorderly conduct. Um, as we go into this, this affidavit, what you found here is this uh, Jade and John were entering into the Capitol, and it turns out while they were saying that they were just recording, they were actually heard celebrating that they made it in. Now, if, I want to say this. Um, on the flip side, a journalist being excited about, you know, being a part of a very crazy moment that might actually, you know, boost their career is not odd. So while everyone's saying, oh, Jade, this photographer that's excited she made it in, you know, that immediately says that she colluded with with the rioters. I don't think that immediately says that, because honestly, if you cover riots, you would know that people just go like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm part of history, even if you don't support it. I mean, when I was in Kenosha and I watched people burning down cities, I was just like, whoa, like I was also in shock. But she sounds excited, like happy, not in shock. She's like, we did it. We did it. We made it in. Woo! And it's like, to me, that sounds a little bit like maybe you were not just documenting the event, but you're happy that you made it inside. I don't know, Savannah, but that's what that looks like to me. It sounds like she's very excited to be there. And again, too, you know, you and I have actually watched history unfold with our own two eyes mm -hmm. as we were reporting on it. So it is a very... You know, sometimes these situations, you can get excited about them or be like, wow, I can't believe that this is happening. But also as a reporter, you know, you should always take a step back and just be observing everything and reporting on it, not necessarily cheering it on. Yeah. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with like being like, whoa, I can't believe we did it. But here's the problem is if we go back, uh, let me let me get down here for a second. Um Here's a statement of fact supporting probable cause. Okay, so John Sullivan got arrested because he voluntarily handed over his footage uh, to the FBI after claiming that he was working for, you know, some sort of mainstream media outlets. Um, but let's read some of these things. Uh, on January 7th, 2021, Sullivan participated in a voluntary interview with a Federal Bureau of Investigation agent in Washington, D.C. Sullivan also stated that he was at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th when scores of individuals entered it. Sullivan stated that he was wearing a ballistic vest and gas mask while there. Not weird for a journalist. He showed the interviewing agent the ballistic vest. He further stated that he entered the U.S. Capitol with others through a window. Okay, so this is already getting weird. That had been broken out, which is not good. Uh, that's, this is where it gets bad. Sullivan stated that he followed the crowd as the crowd pushed past U.S. Capitol Police and followed the crowd into the U.S. Capitol. Now, the problem is that in this document, which we're going to link in the description so you can read it yourself, Sullivan also admitted that he actually is the one who broke the window. So, I mean, even if we want to justify a journalist, like, Sav, I can already see your face. It's like... And I'm like, <laughs> this Sullivan? Yeah, it's like, it's not good um, if CNN's, CNN's John Sullivan uh, is breaking windows of the U.S. Capitol. He's on there. Um, he also said this, that Sullivan had further stated that he had been present at the shooting of a woman within the U S Capitol by U S Capitol police officer and that he had filmed the incident during the interview. Sullivan showed that the interviewing agent, the footage he had taken, which Sullivan stated he had uploaded to the internet. Um, now he was also immediately outside of the speaker's lobby within the U S Capitol. Uh, the footage that Sullivan showed the interviewing agent included footage of individuals breaking glass. But as we go down, um, at the conclusion of the interview, <laughs> He provided a copy of all of the footage that he recorded. And this is where things turned south for John Sullivan, CNN's John Sullivan. Um, <laughs> oh, this is so bad. Okay. Um, <laughs> you, I love your is, reaction to this. Because this, <laughs> this is so sad. It's so dumb, dude. This guy is not smart. Look, during, oh, the, no. in, during, the, during his footage, Sullivan narrates it as he is moving. Okay, so he narrated his own break in and his voice is clearly recognized in the video, it says. Then as we go down here, here's some images provided to the police. Um, it says here that he's saying things like, there are so many people. Let's go. This SHIT is ours. F yeah. We accomplished this SHIT. We did this together. F yeah. Oh no. We are all a part of this history. Let's burn this SHIT down. So <laughs> so maybe if you're committing oh federal crimes and then give the evidence over to the FBI, you shouldn't narrate that it's you doing Yeah. Okay. This is where we just take put we take off our tinfoil hats and just say, <laughs> and CNN's own 
correspondent that was there that has been previously, we're going to get into his backstory a little bit, but I mean, to put this into perspective, CNN's John Sullivan, what tried to burn down the Capitol building and claimed that he wanted to burn it down. And this is the problem with the media. The media thinks that the right wing journalists somehow were there trying to burn down the Capitol building. And by no means does any of the journalists, including the Daily Caller staff who was inside, they were not trying to burn down the building or commit any crimes. I did not with commit any crimes, was not trying to either. We were there to document an event very seriously. But it turns out that it's the left wing that was actually working to cause problems. Um, I know some of you have said that I said that most of the people were not Antifa. This is still not evidence that most of the people were Antifa, though, though Rudy Giuliani said today that they have evidence there's 226 Antifa members who coordinated this. Did you see that recent drop, Savannah? I have not, but it wouldn't be surprising to me because we have seen that Antifa has been trying to call for a revolution. So why wouldn't they take advantage of a situation of thousands of angry people mm -hmm. sieging a capital? Why wouldn't they seize on that to you know, further push their destructive cause. So it is not surprising to me at all. Yeah, but this gets even worse, guys. You know, as they try to cancel us and get, you know, ruin our lives, um, it's like funny because this guy was also, I think he was on Good Morning America. I might be wrong. Um, but I want to say this, John Sullivan, you guys saying, well, you know, when CNN had him on, CNN didn't know that he was like an extremist. They didn't know. I mean, and that, that's a fair statement, except for, you know, uh, Brandon Gutschwager. I love BG. He's such a good journalist. BG, don't kill me for using your footage here. It's watermarked. If you ever want to come on the show, we'll have you on again or for the first time. I, 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 BG is a very good reporter. Um, here's, an, here's a video of John Sullivan actually calling for violence recently. I've seen this clip before uh, at a BLM rally. He's an activist. He's an extremist. Let's watch this clip. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? My name is John Sullivan. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. My group is Insurgents USA. We burned the down. Who, anybody out here seen that white militia guy shoot three, ki three kids? Yeah. yeah. That guy. And I will tell you this is in Utah, a whole bunch of white militia came out there formed against our group. We out there strapped. We out there ready to burn that shit. We out there to defend our shit. We gotta defend ourselves now too. We do. Cause power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the people. Damn right. We gotta We gotta rip Trump out of that office right over there. Pull him out that Nah, nah, we ain't about until the next election. We about to go get that I ain't about that shit. Because you know what time it is? I want y'all to be after me. It's time for a revolution. It's time for a revolution. It's time for a revolution. Huh. Where did I hear that calling these people who stormed the Capitol revolutionaries because they've been calling for a revolution? Savannah, where did we... Where did we get probable cause to call them revolutionaries? I mean, it's like almost like they've been saying this. It's like, actually, no, we, we go to these <laughs> events and we kind of just make up words. Uh, we just like pick words out of the dictionary and we're like, yeah, revolutionary, patriot. We're not calling them that because they call themselves that. We're calling them that because we just decided that that's what they should be. Yeah, it's because we're, you know, they say we're sympathetic with people committing crimes. Guys, I want to make this serious. You know, when people say that if you are, if you hold right wing uh, views that you cannot record a an event of of extremism at you know at, in this country, that's insane. Because first of all, the argument is is that because I'm a Trump supporter or that I voted for Trump, that somehow I was okay with the crimes committed at the Capitol. Now, the very interesting argument about that is that a lot of the violence and the crimes were committed between law enforcement and uh, alleged Trump supporters. Now, 84% of law enforcement voted for Donald Trump. So, if I was supporting Trump supporters at the Capitol. That would mean that I would have to be supporting both the law enforcement and the people that were invading the Capitol at the very same time. And so it's like maybe I wasn't for or against anybody. Maybe I was just there to document and show people what was going on. But on top of that, if you're going to somehow blast me as an individual saying, well, he is he, he is right wing to some extent. And so, you know, therefore, he must be sympathetic with, you know, people attacking police officers and vandalizing offices. It's like, well, if you're going to use that type of narrative and that type of of 
of accountability, then every single journalist who was sympathetic with BLM is responsible for the crimes of Black Lives Matter at the riots they were covering, which is almost every left-wing journalist that was covering the BLM riots, at least the very few that actually did. And that would mean that CNN is, is, is you know, it means that CNN is responsible for, for Kenosha. It's so stupid. It's a double standard. You know, and it's like, it's just so dumb, you know, and I want to say this. I, I think it's absolutely ri ridiculous, but this is even crazier. Check this out. So uh, this article from The Blaze, I put it in a reader for you. We're going to talk about this. John Sullivan is also supported by the mainstream media. Uh, John Sullivan trained for Olympics and appeared in an Uber commercial before becoming a left wing activist and riding at the Capitol. But guys, before we jump into this, I want this is important. John Sullivan trained for the Olympics and appeared in an Uber commercial before becoming a left-wing activist and rioting at the Capitol. We have a video of that. We'll read the article in a second. Let's watch the Uber commercial that sponsors a, a, a someone who's you know promoting terrorism. So before you cancel people who were documenting, remember CNN's John Sullivan is also supported by Uber Rideshare app. Let's watch this. There's no other time in my life I will be able to do this again. My dream is to be world champion. Every single day, six hours a day, I wouldn't be able to do that. It's just not possible. Uber allows me that flexibility to spend more time on the ice. I am John Sullivan. I'm a world-class speed skater, and I drive with Uber. <laughs> oh. Whoops! Oops. Oh no. Oops. Does this mean we need to cancel Uber now? Yeah, well, everyone cancel your, everyone delete your Uber app. We have to cancel them because they once had a guy that's a terrorist on their commercial. What are we Madison, cover your eyes. <laughs> cover your eyes. Madison's back. Guys, Madison's back from vacation. It's remember Madison? This she's uh, you know, she is our favorite doll we got. Honestly, I have a real news. Um, Savannah, can you just run over and grab that package and hand it to me? I'm gonna keep reading this article for a second. Put the article on the screen real fast. And I'm going to read this article to them. This is very important. Um, so uh, this is crazy. So John Sullivan trained for the Olympics and appeared in an Uber commercial before becoming a left-wing activist and rioting at the Capitol. He videotaped himself participating in the rioting. John Sullivan, the man who was arrested for his part in the U.S. Capitol rioting, was an Olympic speed skater. This was in 2016 when he appeared at Uber. He also raised $2,680 through GoFundMe. You guys, GoFundMe is sponsoring terrorists. Cancel GoFundMe. We have to cancel all of our big tech companies. And this is crazy. Who knew big tech was, a, was, was sponsors of domestic terrorism? Did you know that? I mean, I didn't know that. Imagine. That's, are you shocked? Imagine that. Mm. Yeah. Insane. Uh, it says this, that James Sullivan, his brother, told PT News that he became radicalized very quickly. It has hurt our family, James said. My mother cries most days. So John Sullivan founded an Insurgents USA, a left-wing activist organization after the death of George Floyd in police custody in, Man uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. He told KUTV that he has traveled to Washington, D.C. in order to document various protests, but a federal affidavit quotes him as encouraging the rioting from inside the Capitol. Um, <laughs> so he's been charged with the crimes. Now, I'll open this in a second. Uh, guys, this is my point. I I'm not being serious. We are not canceling Uber. We're not canceling GoFundMe. This is the stupidity of cancel culture and why it's so dumb is because it's just like, look, these companies didn't know John Sullivan would become a radicalized individual. Um, you know, it doesn't look like he's responsible for most of the rioting, but he did encourage it. And it looks like he was genuinely there to document, but also to take part in it. And, you know, like, at least I can say I definitely did not commit any crimes inside, you know, or around the grounds. I was documenting it as a journalist, credentialed journalist with a congressional press pass and license. Um, I was operating, you know, with, with in police lines alongside officers i was really doing my best to you know keep things kosher but man this is crazy that cnn and uh mainstream news outlets support these long time seattle protest community alert we have reason to believe that a likely infiltrator agent provocateur by the name of john sullivan or activist john is attempting to insert himself in the seattle protest community um i'm not gonna read one out of 23 oh my gosh uh, John has been kicked from the Salt Lake City and Portland protest scenes due to alarming behaviors, including grifting, profiteering, self-promotion, clout chasing, sabotage of community actions, threats of violence, and maybe most disturbingly ties to the far right. So they're saying that he's actually far right. 
I'm going to be honest. I didn't read this thread until now. Savannah, did you read this thread? I just put it in I here. I did not. Okay. So this is getting, can we read, we should read a little more of this. This is juicy. Let's get into it. And I swear I'm not that pink, guys. <laughs> Purple. But Elijah want... freaks out about his color grading because I don't know why you always get the better camera when we're on screen. But yeah, yeah you look. She always gets better camera well, lighting I'm, than I, I do. I am Asian. So maybe that's why I look more yellow than you do. Well, yeah. And pink. then also too, like I have this problem, this gland problem where my face swells. And I have like my jaw moves around and people always think that I'm like addicted to cocaine. And I wish that was the case because then I could quit the cocaine and then my jaw would stop moving, but it doesn't stop. And then I get like, and everyone always thinks that I'm like, oh, people are always like, you gained weight or you've lost weight. And it's like, no, it's just how puffy my face is for the day because sometimes my face yeah, just I, hangs. I love when people leave you mean comments and you're like, hey, someone asked me why I was fat. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just excess like, calories? Okay, I'm sorry that happened, Lige. People on the internet are mean. Here Everyone's are. always wondering why it looks like I'm always <laughs> gaining weight. It's kind of a gland problem in my chin hangs. Does anyone else have that problem? If you have that problem, let us know below and we can cry together. The fact that even though we're not fat, our faces make us look obese. Well, uh, speaking of people who have problems, John Sullivan in short, it says here, John's brother James is the co-founder of a pro-Trump org called Civilized Awakening and has strong ties to Proud Boys, even having spoken at a Proud Boy rally. The brother's polarized political stances can conveniently boister the other's public personas. Um, well, you can read this thread. It's here. It's by the account is by rebellion baby. And it is timestamped November 26, 2020. We won't jump into that much longer, but I will say that as we look at this, John Sullivan has a history of extremism and it looks like that he, I don't know how that's ties to the right wing, but it looks like CNN should have known about this and they still chose to use him. And this Jade Sacker, as we saw, is being used by a lot of people, but she seems to be excited to have gotten in. Now, I don't. I think she's less to blame. Savannah, I don't know what you're. I don't know about you're saying, but there's a way to construe the way that she's talking. That on one end, I think she could make an argument for herself that she was just like excited that she was filming a documentary, apparently, and that she was just like, I can't believe we did it or whatever she was saying. Like she's she's happy because she's getting good footage for her for her video, and I'll I'll give her that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also just think it's funny because the irony is is that government property and pulling politicians out of office. And then, you know, we see them at these types of mm -hmm. events. That's worth noting too. And can I also say too, if we go to my, my screen, he has AOC eyes, you know, like these ones, they always look like this. The crazy eyes. But, you know, I'll just say this. The only things that I would, I told people in the Capitol is like, I warned people that they could get shot by officers, which someone did. Um, you know, I mean, and I also would say this too, Sam, to put, to put people on, on a perspective here, we need to be fair though. We need to be fair here and say this. If you're a left-wing journalist, there's a level of being agreeable with this that it makes sense in terms of the fact that people were attacking left-wing journalists at this event. They were attacking the AP. I helped the BBC photographer not get attacked. I mean, I mean, people aren't happy with the media. And just like the right-wing media gets attacked at left-wing events, people tried to attack me. And I was like, I'm with Blaze TV. And then they didn't attack me. So like I, you know, we've gone in black block to left-wing events. I've held a shield at the front of an Antifa line. I've marched with Antifa with a shield so I could get frontline footage of their assault on the Department of Homeland Security federal courthouse. Right. Does that mean that I supported Antifa, that I'm sympathetic? No, it means I'm a journalist embedding myself to get the right footage. It's called journalism. So I don't think it's weird if a, if a left-wing journalist pretends to be right-wing or like, you know, embeds himself to, to blend in so he doesn't get attacked or so he doesn't like, I mean, I'm being serious, guys. They were attacking people. We have footage from our previous episodes. They destroyed a lot of people's cameras and the FBI is investigating this. Um, but it's a different thing to like commit a crime, right? Like, I mean, I broke my leg in, in Portland. You guys saw this footage. Remember this? When they attacked AP News um, and they poured water. This is from uh, Julio Rosas from Town Hall Media. You can follow Julio Rosas on Twitter. Uh, he regularly covers riots. You can also go to townhall.com uh, as well, which is a great publication. And uh, this is the Trump supporters destroying all of their uh, camera equipment. And it really, this is not, this was a common thing. And it's actually true that they really, like they knocked over very expensive cameras, nice tripods, lights, hitting things. And I know people say this was all Antifa, but I mean, they're like that guy's with the beard, It's not Antifa. Um, again, I still say Antifa probably played a part in this um, to an extent. BLM probably did. I just don't think it was fair to blame them all. Right? I agree because let's look at the muscle definition of a lot of the people at the front lines of, mm -hmm. you know, initially pushing past that first line of police. Those are not Antifa members. Right. No, 100%. They're not. And I want to bring up this video um, as we, you know, sort of bring this full circle. 
as the left freaks out and says, you know, the right wing are the journalists who are committing the crimes. We have a history of extremism. Wrong. I don't. Savannah doesn't. We actually have a very good reputation. I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be fine here. But John Sullivan does have a reputation that they still rely on him while accusing us of the things he did that he's doing. But also they say, oh, how has, how has anyone reacted violently in D.C. over a lost election? I don't know. Let's play this video from Inauguration Day in 2017. When can we remember when what the left wing did in D.C. on Inauguration Day? Let's play that clip. Well, based off this footage, we can see that the left took Trump getting into office very well. Yeah. That was a that was a lot of peaceful protest there. Yikes, guys. It's like, what, what did we forget? Like they, they did this, too. And it's there. It's look, I, I'm not. I get why people were pissed then. I get why people are pissed now. I just, I understand why people get angry. But I just want to say this, with John Sullivan being arrested and being held and encouraging the crimes that were going on there while the left tries to blame the right wing, meanwhile, while they say that we are, you know, the right wing's insane for committing crimes around another- Became a victim of that. Definitely. So I woke up this morning on my Instagram, and as you know, we like to go live on our Instagram. We like to post our videos onto our Instagram of what we are witnessing when we're on the ground at these events. We posted what we saw on January 6th, and a lot of the posts were people, you know, using barriers to push back against police, people getting flashbang, maced, fighting with cops. All of the bloodiest clips on my Instagram are still still up. But the one clip that I put up, the one clip of Trump supporters all stomping and chanting USA, and it ended with a pan of the crowd of a thousand Trump supporters or thousands of Trump supporters peacefully at the Capitol. That post was the one that Instagram decided to remove from my account this morning, um, saying that it was removed for violence or dangerous organizations. Again, all of the clips with actual violence in them are still up on my page. But the one clip showing that these people were peaceful, you know, because there's two sides to this situation. Situation. Yes, there was violence that day, but there was also thousands there that were rallying peacefully. That was the clip they decided to remove.